Hey there, we just released the progress bar widget and this video is going to be all about using the progress bar widget. We're going to consider two use cases for the progress bar widget. The first being a download workflow where you'd want to display the download progress in the progress bar widget. And the second is a form completion workflow where you would want to show users how much percentage of the form they have completed. So that's all we're going to see in this video. And uh, without any delay, I think we can get started. My name is Confident and I'm a dev advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is drop in a progress bar widget. So I'm just going to head to the widget section and let's bring in a progress bar widget. So you have a progress bar. I'm just going to place this right here. And here you have a progress bar on the canvas. The progress bar has a couple of properties and the first is the type of progress bar. So you can set this to determinate or indeterminate. And for the determinate type, you can actually break this down to a couple of checkpoints, if you will. So let's set this back to indeterminate. And uh, moving on, the next property we have here is the progress percentage. And this actually shows the percentage progress on the progress bar, as you can see. You also have other styling options to tweak the progress bar to your taste. And uh, that's all you have for the properties. So to actually use the progress bar, let's go in to configure a download workflow. Unfortunately, I don't have an actual download API. So what I'm going to do is simulate a download experience using JavaScript. So let's actually go to write the code that do just that. So I'm going to create a new JavaScript file. And uh, what I'm going to do here is write a function that is called on every interval. And basically that function just updates the download progress, stores that value in the AppSmith store, and we can read that value from the progress bar. So let's call this function download, all right? And the body of this function would try to increment the value saved in the AppSmith store. So let's create a variable called progress, this is const progress. And this would try to read what is already existing in the store so that it can increment that value. So this is appsmith.store.download progress. Uh, on first run, this is going to be undefined. So I need to um, set this up to be zero on first run. And then I'm going to do a check to know if the current progress is less than 100 so that we can increment this. So this is going to be progress less than 100. If it's less than 100, what we want to do is do a store. So let's do um, store value into the AppSmith store and the key is going to be download progress. And what I want to do here is save the current progress, but increment it by 10. And that's basically all I want to do. If the progress is less than 100, I think I should end the workflow here and just use a return statement. So return. I can end the workflow here, use a return statement, and that ends everything. Else, if it's more than 100 or up to 100 and more, what I can do is clear the interval that calls the download function on the specified interval. So this is going to be clear interval. And for the interval ID, I'm just going to use a key of download. All right, so this looks good. And we can go to set up a download button that would call up this function on the specified interval. So let's head back add the button here real quick. So this is going to be the download button, uh, D-O-W-N. Okay, yeah, that's right. This is the download button. And here, um, what I can do is run a set interval when this is clicked on. So this is going to be set interval. And for the function, this is going to be the JS object one dot download. Yeah, that's the download function there, all right? Next thing I need to do here is specify an interval. So let's say we want to call this every 250 milliseconds. And last thing I need to do here is pass in an ID for this interval so that we can clear it. And we're already using the download key. So this is download. All right, so this looks good. Um, last thing I need to do here is probably add the button to reset the download widget. So I'm just going to place a button here. And this is going to be the reset button. So this is reset, all right? And when this is clicked on, what we want to do um, is reset the value in the download key of the AppSmith store. So this is JavaScript. What we want to do is store value. And for the download progress key, 
we want to reset this back to zero and finally we can display this in the progress bar so this is going to be coming from .download progress and uh, there we have the flow complete so in order to test this out i can actually click on the download button and you can see that every two milliseconds uh, the download function is called and you actually have the download progress displayed on the progress bar and imagine this is where you would want to go display the response from your download api um, and lastly we can also reset this and give this one more run and you can see that the download progress is simulated and displayed on the uh, progress bar so this is how you can display download progress using the progress bar i think i should just also set this to secondary yeah and this looks nice so we can give this one more go just for the fun of it and uh, yeah that looks nice uh, the last thing i want to show you here is how to display form completion progress using the progress bar so i have a simple form here and i'm just going to bring this to the side right here we have a simple form that has a couple of fields and what we want to do is that we want to show the form completeness in a progress bar so i'm just going to bring in a second progress bar and let's place this inside of the form you have the second progress bar here and we can also similarly show the percentage so we need to figure out how many of these inputs have been um, completed and then display that progress in the progress bar and similarly to do this we need to write some javascript logic so let's go write a form progress function so this is just object one and what i need to do here is to add in a new function let's call this form progress and this is going to be a function that tries to figure out how much of the form is complete so the first thing we need to do here is actually grab the data that has been entered into the form so this is going to be return form one the data and running this right now we have all the fields empty because we actually don't have any data in the form so let's head back and type in some data so, so for example i have some data in the name and the email field so heading back and running this so you can see that we have some data showing up in the first two inputs so we need to figure out a percentage of the inputs that have been completed and display that so in order to do this i'm just going to create a variable called fields and uh, this is going to be grabbing data from form data but in this case i just want to grab the values and not the entire um, objects with the keys so i can use the object.values function for this so this is object.values and then let's um, put in form the data here and if i show you what we have right here in the field you see that we only have just the values so using this we can actually calculate the progress so let's create a variable called progress and what we can do here is do a reduce which tries to count the number of fields that have been completed so this is going to be fields dot reduce and for the reducer function it takes in a function takes in a function and also a default value for the function so the first thing we have here is the previous value which will be initialized to zero because we are passing a default value and we similarly have the current value and what i'm going to do right here is just write a simple code that tries to figure out if the current value is valid if the current value is valid what we need to do is increment the previous value by one else we just return the previous value and that's basically all we need to do here so i'm going to return progress here so that we can see the output all right and i'm going to run this and you can see that we have two fields of the form completed so now let's write some code that figures out the percentage that has been completed and we can actually do that by dividing by the entire length of the number of inputs which in this case is five so we can grab that number from our fields dot length all right and uh, this is 40 percent so let's just multiply this by 100 so that we have the actual percentage so this is multiplied by 100 and lastly we have 40 percent here since we have all of this configured we can actually save it to the store and then uh, display the result in the progress bar so this is going to be store value this is going to be form progress all right and save the value of progress into the store all right this looks good and uh, i think we're done here for the form progress function so what i need to do 
is hook up all of these inputs such that when, whenever the value changes, we actually go to call the form progress function. So you have the on text change um, event. So when the on text change event happens, we want to go call the form progress function. And I can copy this code over and use it for all of the inputs we have here. So I'm just going to do the same for all of the various inputs we have on the form widget here. So we have um, input two. And I think the last thing I'm going to do here is also do the same for the reset button such that when the form is reset, we actually go to um, actually reset the state of the form progress. So I'm going to also add this code here and uh, that's all we need to do. Last thing here is to actually to actually display the value. So this is going to come from .form progress and we are good to go. So we can actually reset the form here and go to start making use of it. So I'm going to start typing some names. So this is John email is john at do.com age is 34 username is john and password is one two three four five six and you can see that the form progress is complete when i have the form complete and as i was timing things in you could see that the form progress actually increases accordingly so we can reset this and everything actually goes um, away so this is how you can configure form progress um, completeness using the progress bar. I also similarly saw how to configure a download progress using the progress bar. And uh, they have the 100% showing right there. All right, so this has been a short video on using the progress bar. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any suggestions on um, new use cases for the progress bar, please do let us know in the comment section and I'd like to know what you think. All right, that'll be all for today's video. Till I see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.